Let's continue working on our Dean Russo Tiger. Today, we're going to go over how to start adding color. Dean Russo is considered a mixed media artist because of the different materials he uses on each of his artworks. Dean Russo's art includes everything from watercolor, oil pastels, colored pencils, wax, and charcoal to Sharpies, spray paint, liquid acrylics, and more. In addition to the variety of mediums used in his work, what makes Dean's portraits most striking is how he captures the eyes of his subjects and shows their expressiveness on canvas. Like Dean Russo, you can use a variety of materials to add color and patterns to your tiger. You know, I mean, I use every medium. You see it out here. It's pastels, it's oil, it's pencil, it's wax, it's, it's Sharpies, it's spray can, it's liquid acrylics. Um, it's collage, it's markers, it's whatever that's sure. around that I make. So when you're adding color to your Dean Russo Tiger, you can use a variety of materials. I've been using some crayons, some washable markers, and some watercolor paints. It's important to know how these materials all work together. Dean Russo is a mixed media artist, meaning that he uses many different materials on his art. And he does this in a certain way. So if you're using dry materials like crayons and markers, you should use those first before adding any wet materials like watercolor or adding water to your washable markers, which we'll go over how to do in just a little bit. So I've colored a little bit with crayon on this side first, and then I'm going to add some marker and I'm gonna add a little bit of watercolor paint as well. We noticed in Dean Russo's work that he also adds some patterns. So with a black crayon, I've gone through and added some hearts, some spirals, some different types of lines. And I'm gonna to continue to do that here in this blank area where I haven't added any color yet. So I'm using a black crayon and crayons are made of wax meaning that they will resist any material that's mixed with water, like a watercolor or a washable marker that is water-based. You want to use your crayons first, then markers, and then if you are going to use some watercolors, that would be after. If you did it in a different order, then you're going to end up with materials that don't work very well together. If you color with marker over a wet surface, you're actually going to end up ruining the marker and the ink will not come out right. Also, if you used crayon on top of a wet surface, that wouldn't work well either. You might end up ripping your paper. So you wanna use your crayons first and then markers or watercolor. So I added a couple designs and now I think I'm ready to start adding more color with my crayons. One thing to keep in mind when you're adding color is a color wheel, specifically analogous colors, colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. You can think of maybe two or three colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel as analogous pairs or sets of colors. Notice that in the sections that I have already added color in, I've used analogous colors colors like yellow and orange or purple and blue, a little bit of pink. I've used red and orange and yellow here. I haven't used complementary colors, colors that are across from each other on the color wheel like green and red 
in the same area. If you tried to blend those together, they would end up making a brown or a gray color, which isn't really what we see in Dean Russo's work. So it's good to keep your analogous colors in mind when doing this and have a color wheel handy to look at. So with your crayons, you can add color by just coloring in some sections. Notice how I'm just kind of giving a rough color with my crayon. I'm not coloring in every area, I'm leaving a little bit of white space because I'm going to add some different mediums or materials like Dean Russo because he's a mixed media artist. Kind of going around the edge here with my purple just to give it a little outline. I'm keeping in mind analogous colors when I do this so that I know what colors blend together nicely. And again, keep some areas white because you're going to add some other materials there. Once you have some areas filled in with crayon, then you can use some markers and fill in some of those other areas. You can color right next to the crayon with your marker, but remember not to add any water to it yet. We're going to use the water in the last step. Also keeping in mind my analogous colors when I do this. So I'm using similar colors next to each other. It's okay to have some white spots showing through here because I'm going to use a little bit of actual watercolor in my last step and I'm going to blend these washable markers with water. So let's pretend that I've colored in everything with crayons and markers and I'm ready to use water. This is my final step. I have some watercolor paints here that I'm going to add as well. You'll need a water cup and a paintbrush and you're going to paint right over the marker area. You should see the color blend and turn into a watercolor paint. Because the markers are washable, they're water-based, which means that they are like a watercolor paint. I'm also going to add a little bit of actual watercolor on top and just blend that in in some areas that need a little bit more color. Remember that using water on your project is the last step. You should not add water when you haven't colored in everything with crayon and everything with marker. Then if you want to paint over it, you can and turn your markers into a watercolor and add a little bit of watercolor paint as well. Some of the spots that aren't getting fully colored in, you could either add a little bit more color and sometimes the marker takes a little bit of time to blend. So just give it a few minutes and you should see the color start to bleed more. It just depends on the color of marker. Remember, if you're adding water to your project and you're blending colors together, you need to rinse your brush when you switch colors. If you're blending analogous colors together, like here I'm blending in some greens and some yellows together, and then I went over here to blend in pink and purple, I would get green and yellow all over here, and that wouldn't look very pretty. So rinse your brush off in water and clean off the other color. If you're painting with watercolors, make sure you do the same thing. You dip your brush in the color to use it, and then when you're done, you need to clean off your, your brush. So I have some purple on here. I wanna clean that off, and I want to use orange. Then I can dip into orange with a clean brush and not worry about getting any purple on it. We wanna keep our colors nice and clean so that they will create beautiful paintings for us. One last thing I can add is an eye color. I want to keep this little part white because that is the reflection of the eye where the light is hitting the tiger's eye. But I'm going to paint a light orange color for the eye color here. Tigers often have kind of yellowy orange eyes or even a yellow green eye. So you decide it's your project. Try to think of an eye color that will make the eyes really stand out like Dean Russo tries to do with his animal portraits. The eyes are the most expressive, he says. All right, artist, I hope you have so much fun creating your Dean Russo tiger using mixed media to add color. I can't wait to see how yours turn out.